Since the beginning of this year, I've been hard at work on the design for my new handheld gaming PC. I'm aiming to improve on the old design in as many ways as possible. Today, I'm going to build the first prototype and test out some games on it. I've just had a big box from PCBWay turn up and I haven't been this excited to open a package for a long time. So let's get started. This time around, I asked PCBWay to 3D print the housing for me in nylon using one of their SLS printers in order to keep the project moving quickly. This is the first time I've had any SLS printing done, but I'm definitely impressed with the results. The prints came up very clean with a slightly textured finish. I should have scaled the files up slightly as there's been a small amount of shrinkage which is making the display a very tight fit in the front housing. The back half of the housing has also warped slightly, which isn't a huge surprise as it's quite thin in places and PCBWay did warn me this could be an issue. Not to worry though, because I was able to clamp the bottom of the housing to a table and then heat it to get it to hold the correct shape. And just like that, with a bit of YouTube magic, the housing is now filled, sanded and painted. It took a few coats of filler and some sanding, but I'm pretty happy with the results and they are more than good enough for a first prototype. PCBWay also resin printed some joystick surrounds for me in their UTR8100 transparent resin with a matte diffuse finish. These should do a great job of diffusing the light of the joystick surround LEDs. Now that the housing is sorted, let's take a look at the PCBs. As usual, I've made a heap of mistakes on this first revision of the PCBs and I've spent the better part of a week troubleshooting and patching things up enough to get the controller working. These are the joystick PCBs. Each one mounts one of the joysticks and a Hall Effect sensor for the corresponding trigger. I wrongly assumed that the Hall Effect PS5 joysticks I bought would have the same pinout as the common joysticks found in Arduino beginner kits, but turns out that's not the case at all. The polarity on the sensors is reversed, so just to get this revision working, I've had to drill out the holes for the sensor power and ground connections and use wires to connect them instead. The triggers also mount to these PCBs, so there's no need for the back cover to be in place for testing. The triggers are just a 3D printed part with a tiny little 3x1 magnet glued to the arm. The trigger just pivots on a 2mm stainless shaft and I've used PS5 trigger springs here as they are nice and cheap and far easier than bending our own. Next up is the right controller PCB. This is the slave side of the controller so it features a nice simple Atmega 328p microcontroller and it connects to the main controller via I2C. There's also a connector here for the trackpad. I've given the LED joystick surrounds a significant upgrade with 10 of these APA 102 LEDs on each side. Eventually I'll write some software so we can configure the settings for the LEDs from within Windows. This is the left controller PCB. As you can see, I accidentally left out the 3.3 volt regulator from the design, so I hacked up one of my spare NUC deck PCBs and stole the regulator section from it just to get this going. This PCB features a USB hub with up to four outputs. Two are used by a pair of microcontrollers that are on the board for the controller and trackpad, and the other two will eventually be used to connect the touch input of the display and the power management board. Last but not least, I've also designed a tiny PCB for the bottom of the console to enable docked charging and to break out the remaining USB ports on the inside of the case through the dock. All that's left to do now is to print the rest of the parts we need and then I can get started with the assembly. Let's put it all together. Before we begin, I've already added all of the threaded inserts to the front housing and I've pressed the joystick surround rings into place. The first step is to fit the display into the front housing. I've added a bit of thin double-sided tape to the edges of the display to try and hold it in better. But really, the cutout on the front housing is a little small due to the shrinkage I mentioned earlier, so I will have to either get this part made again or make one for myself for the final build. I did also buy some USB-C connectors so I could build a custom cable for the touch, but I accidentally ordered female connectors instead of male. So for now, I'll just connect up this USB cable and leave it hanging out of the top so I can connect it externally. Right now would have been a great time to fit the speakers, but as it turns out, I forgot to order them. So they're gonna have to wait for now. Next, I'm going to install all of the buttons and membranes, as well as the 3D printed shoulder buttons. Now for the PCBs. Starting off with the left-hand side controller PCB. It's held in place with three 10mm long M2 standoffs 
and a single M2 screw in the middle. I've also got to connect the display power on this side. On the next revision, I'm going to change this connector out for a four pin version so the touch can be connected through here too. At this point, I like to place something under the screen so there's some room clear for the joysticks. I'm just using a small plastic box with a microfiber cloth to protect the screen. The joystick PCBs just screw into the top of the three standoffs with some M2 screws. I'll connect the ribbon cable that joins the joystick PCB to the main PCB and then it's time to move on to the other side. The right hand side controller PCB uses the same hardware to mount it as the left side. Now is probably a good time to connect the trackpad before there's too much other stuff in the way. The rumble motor mount covers the back of the trackpad so it needs to be installed too before the ribbon cable is finally connected to the trackpad. Then I can mount the right joystick PCB and move on to installing the 10 pin ribbon cable that connects the two halves of the controller together. Now we just need to install the PC mounting brackets followed by the PC. I'm going to apply some capped on tape to the larger metal surfaces below the PC just in case something is touching. All that's left now is to connect up the controller's USB cable. This USB connector housing barely fits in the case, so I can't install the docking PCB yet, but I do already have a way to solve this problem for the next revision. I haven't got the power management quite ready yet, so for now, let's just throw the back cover on and fire it up for a test. Damn, those LED surrounds look good. It looks like everything's working, so let's fire up a couple of quick games and give these controls a test. I've got handheld companion running here for the OSD, but I'm leaving the system uncapped for today as well as keeping VSync off, just so I can begin to gauge what it's capable of. I'm going to start off easy with Colin McRae Dirt 3. I know I've tested this one a bunch of times, but it's one of my all-time favourites, and even though it was released way back in 2010, I think it holds up extremely well, even by today's standards. With the low preset selected and VSync turned off, I'm getting at least 180 frames per second. The higher presets slow it down a bit, but I can honestly say that I can't tell the difference on this little display, so I'll be sticking with low for this one. The rumble feedback is working nicely. It's a nice thing to have in this game, as it really helps with the immersion. I have messed around with this one a bit more than the others, and I found it will happily provide 60 frames per second on the low preset with the TDP capped at 10 watts. So we should see excellent runtime on this title. Let's move on to something a bit more challenging, The Witcher 3. This is one of those games I've heard a lot about, and I'm keen to give it a proper play when I've got some time. It was released in 2015, and it's definitely a bit more demanding than the last one. However, with low settings, the little 5700U is handling it with no difficulties. I even tried capping the TDP for this game off camera and it was still very playable at 15 watts, managing a respectable 45 FPS average. You can even get away with 10 watts if you're happy with 30 frames, so this is another title which should get fantastic battery life on this system. Alright, let's step it up a notch again with Horizon Zero Dawn. I played this one back in 2020 when it was first released on PC, using my first handheld PC project over Steam Link. I never imagined that in a few short years I would have built a handheld PC capable of actually running this title on its own, let alone doing a decent job of it. When the game first started it picked ultra settings automatically, but I was only getting about 25 frames per second. It's obviously a well optimised game as it still felt remarkably smooth for such a low frame rate. I doubt we can get away with much of a cap on the power for this one, so it's probably a title best left played when you're not too far from a wall outlet. I won't show you any games that require the trackpad right now, as it's still missing a few critical features before it's fully functional. But I have the core functionality up and running, and I'm honestly glad I added it, because I've already had a few instances where it was more useful than the touchscreen. Before we wrap things up, I need to say another huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this project. They have been instrumental in kickstarting this project, and their continued support allows me to keep the updates coming for you guys. As you've seen, not only do they make high quality PCBs, but they can also do all types of manufacturing, including 3D printing, machining, and even sheet metal fabrication. Make sure you show them some love for supporting the channel and check them out next time you need something made. Well, that just about wraps it up for now. I've still got some fixes to make to the controller design and a power management system to get started on, along with more software to write. But all of that will be coming up in a future video. If you'd like to see me test anything specific on this console, let me know in the comments or jump on our Discord for a chat. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying the project. See you next time.